Hey everyone, today we're going to take a few minutes here and let's talk about intercoolers. Now, if you've been following my videos in the past, uh, you realize that I've been running the stock intercooler uh, with some modifications to the car, and I really haven't found a need to upgrade the intercooler yet. Um, one of the reasons is, um, living along Lake Michigan, it really hasn't been that warm. But, this June, we had five days of uh, temperatures over 90 degrees, and that's the first time we've had temperatures that warm. Uh, since owning the Fiesta ST, and that includes actually the year we had the Fiesta Movement car as well. And I can tell you that after 90 degrees, anything above that, the factory intercooler really starts to um, struggle, especially if you have a tuned car with some other modifications done to it. That's when I realized that, you know what, that's I think the threshold of what I can do with the stock intercooler. I was noticing that the temperatures uh, were increasing quite a bit and not really going down at all when you started to move. It took a while for the temperature to come down in the intercooler. So, um, my first step was is to buy another OEM intercooler um, until I figured out what aftermarket one I wanted to go to. So here we have the, um, the factory original intercooler out of my 2015 Fiesta. This is after uh, 30,000 miles. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's in pretty bad shape. Um, all the fins are, uh, are pretty much smashed and uh, there's dents inside the, um, inside the tubes. Um, every spring, I would spend about two hours with a pair of tweezers and a little screwdriver fixing every single one of those vents or uh, fins uh, before the, uh, the temperature started to warm up. Um, I didn't do that this year uh, because I already had purchased another OEM intercooler to use. But what I noticed from just doing that is that I did get the temperatures to come down a little bit quicker with uh, the fins being straightened on the new intercooler. But it wasn't really enough to say, you know what, if I ever wanted to do with some additional tuning on the car, um, we'll go to stage two or stage three or do anything else. I was going to be limited by that guy, especially in the summertime when the temperatures get in the uh, upper 80s to, to 90s. So that brings me to this guy right here. This is the Mountune uh, Fiesta ST intercooler. This is the first generation model. This is the one that has the fabricated um, and welded end caps. The new one has um, cast end caps and is available only in black. I got lucky enough that. When these came up for sale, um, I think they were, they were a couple hundred dollars off, I mean close to $500 off uh, list for a few remaining of these silver Gen 1 um, intercoolers. Performance wise, there's no difference between uh, the intercooler that's available today and this first Gen 1. The only difference is the end caps. So uh, let's talk about the differences between the two intercoolers. Uh, well besides this one uh, looks a lot nicer, there's some real engineering that goes on behind this. The Intercooler uh, from Montune is a little bit uh, wider than the uh, Fiesta ST factory one. And of course this takes up more of the area that's in the lower bumper cover. So you're, you're really pushing more air through this frontal area of the intercooler. The other part is it's actually just a little bit taller. Uh, I think it's really only about, um, I don't know, maybe about a quarter inch uh, taller, half inch taller, something like that. So it's not much taller. But you don't really want to go a lot taller on the Fiesta. And the reason is because you have the bumper crash bar that sits right above this. And also there's a uh, splash guard that sits down below it. The taller the radiator you get, or intercooler you get, that's gonna limit the amount of air that's gonna go to the radiator. And there's already a lot of reports of guys overheating their Fiesta STs. And one reason I think that is, and I can't get anyone to help provide me with any data online to really answer this question is, when you put a gigantic intercooler in front, a real tall intercooler, and you're trying to really block as much of that radiator as you can, um, you're going to increase the amount of temperature that's in the radiator because you're not passing as much air through the fins of the radiator. The intercooler is getting it, but your radiator isn't, which means your coolant temps are going to go up. And chances are, if you're running a gigantic intercooler, you also have some tuning parameters that increase the timing even further. If you increase the timing, you're going to increase the heat. You probably leaned out the engine even more to make more horsepower. The leaner you go, the hotter it's going to get. So, you can easily see that it doesn't take long before you get an intercooler that's too big for your application. And that's not talking about too big for the turbo, you're talking about too big for the cooling pack that the Fiesta has. And then you're going to have to upgrade the radiator and then it just continues on downstream. And that's something I didn't really want to get into. So what I want to do is find a intercooler that worked well with the factory cooling pack that I knew I wouldn't have to do any modifications to the chassis to install. And thankfully Mountune is exactly that. Uh, I think Cobb and Mishimoto, some of the ones, they're also pretty close. Uh, but if you go on the forums, you'll see guys just gigantic intercoolers, just monster things that they're sticking on the front of their cars. Yeah, they look cool, but you're probably doing more harm to your radiator than you realize. Uh, the other part of that is how the intercooler works. 
is you're taking hot air from this side that's coming out of the turbo. And you're gonna turn it into cold air coming over here. So you have hot air that's coming in and hot air um, it is, has actually um, expanded quite a bit compared to what it's going to go to get to the cool side. So as the large air molecules and stuff flow through here, and they begin to cool by dissipating heat through all these fins, the molecules begin to contract. In the process of contracting, there's a byproduct of that, and that is condensation. So if you are over chilling your, your charged air, you're actually gonna probably get condensation inside the intercooler. And that condensation is gonna end up inside the engine. You're actually gonna suck that through um, and I don't think you really want water inside your engine because water doesn't really compress all that well. Hence the term hydraulics. It's hydro, which is water. So you don't want to have an intercooler that's too big because if you overchill the air, you're going to get condensation. You ever look under your car when you run air conditioning? What happens? Uh, you're going to have a puddle of water because you're taking hot air, you're condensing it to make cold air, and the byproduct is water. So you could actually start to get some condensation inside the intercooler. And these aren't really designed to uh, evacuate the air out of it. They're designed to be a sealed system to maintain uh, boost pressure. So anyway, there's a little thermodynamics uh, for you as well. Back to the, uh, the Mountain intercooler. The one thing that I really liked about this is it's going to be a direct bolt-in. Um, I'm going to flip it over here real quick here. You can see these little uh, posts here go directly into the, uh, the factory uh, rubber donuts that are in there. And on the bottom, it's got two, uh, two tabs that will uh, run screws right into the, uh, the factory mounts. So really, uh, besides taking the bumper cover off, which is really not that big of a job, this is actually going to be a really easy installation. And that's what's been really great about all the Montune stuff. Almost everything I've ever purchased from them has just been an absolute breeze to install. It's engineered properly, it's easy to install, it's top quality, their customer service is pretty good. So when you look at all that together, there's a reason why I pay for the extra to go with Montune versus some of the other stuff. Yeah, you can find intercoolers all day long for a lot less money, but do they really put all the engineering and development time and the thought into exactly what the car needs to operate? I don't know, but I know what the Mountune guys, they probably did, and everything that I've ever seen from them indicates they're engineers. They're not just guys who are, are making stuff in the garage. So the next step for me is to actually go ahead and get this thing installed. And to do that, you gotta remove the front bumper cover and the front headlights. Montune provides you with really nice instructions to do so. Uh, you can also get the instructions from your local dealer if you want to look at how Ford recommends taking it apart. Um, I estimate this will probably be about a um, two to three hour project. Um, when I did the, um, the replacement for the OEM one, it took me quite a bit longer because I also uh, installed the Montune splitter at the same time and kind of took my time not understanding exactly how everything was going to come apart. For the second go around, I should be able to cu cut quite a bit of time off of that. So. There you have a little bit of intercooler tech, uh, a little bit of review on the Mountune intercooler, and a little bit of comparison of what it looks like for a 30,000 mile uh, factory Fiesta ST intercooler. So make sure you guys subscribe to the, uh, the BRGT350 uh, YouTube page. We're going to go ahead and get this thing installed, and then we're going to come back around and do a review video on what we think of this compared to what I took off the car. Catch you guys later.